Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Mark chapter 8, jumping to verse 1. And those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. It's almost like he's recalling the miracle he just performed in two passages ago or two chapters ago um, with the 5,000, perhaps trying to elicit some sort of response of faith from his disciples. Verse 3, And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. Uh, once again, just like last time Jesus fed the 5,000, he did what only he could do and multiply what they had. But the disciples did what they could do and they distributed the bread. Verse 7, and they had a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. Uh, it is interesting that these appear to be offered up after they saw him multiply the bread. Um, so almost like they were possibly hesitant. Uh, verse 8, so they did eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. And they had, that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. And straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of Dalamunutha. And the Pharisees came forth, began to question him with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall be no sign given unto this generation. Jesus did not do miracles to convince unbelievers with hearts that rejected truth. Jesus performed miracles in the context of love and mercy and usually in direct response to faith, but certainly not to appease those that didn't want a relationship with him. Continuing on in verse 13. And he left them and entered into the ship again and departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of Herod. It's very important the influences that we allow in our life. Uh, it doesn't take much time for seeds to get planted in our heart that will cause us to lose our way. Flee any close relationships with people uh, that those people promote sin, uh, spread gossip, or are not submitted to spiritual authority. Uh, this is, of course, not shunning or refusing to talk to someone. Obviously, they had plenty of interactions with the Pharisees. In fact, to fulfill the Great Commission, we must reach outside of ourselves, um, but we must be careful to not allow those that we're trying to reach to influence us instead. It is important con to control the environment that we're in uh, and to use wisdom. Verse 16, And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? And he came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. He asked if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I don't remember who it was, but I do remember reading a, a commentator that uh, pointed out that 
perhaps Jesus performed this gradual healing to illustrate that the spiritual blindness the disciples displayed just a few verses prior um, would gradually be healed as well. Verse 26, And he sent them away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered, saith unto them, Thou art the Christ. Um, I have a video that talks more about this conversation as it is recorded in Matthew chapter 16 as it provides more information. Um, the video is on the true identity of Jesus Christ. I'll have it linked below as well as on a card at the end of the video. So please check that video out and it goes completely into this conversation and into the identity of Jesus Christ. Verse 30, and he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And of course, this was prophesied throughout the whole Old Testament uh, in passages such as Isaiah 53. Verse 32, And he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. While Peter understood who Jesus was, it's evident he didn't quite understand what Jesus was there to do. Verse 33, But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. This is why it's important to know God and to study his word. Peter did not intentionally mean to embrace this message that would oppose the cross, but when we don't fill ourselves with truth, we will naturally be filled with faulty understanding. Verse 34, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. To take up the cross is to choose death. Of course, this is the death of our will, our desires, our plans. Anything else that does not fit within the will of God. To truly follow Jesus we must be willing to leave and forsake anything else in pursuit of Jesus and his plan for our life. Uh, and in this death of the will of our flesh, we will be led to everlasting life. Verse 35, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Thank you so much for joining Upon This Rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless.